Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. On today's Valentine's Day special, we're going to make the famous Japanese raw chocolate, the Nama Choco. Nama chocolate. And as usual, I'm going to leave you through this process step by step and explain to you what each steps do to the dish. And that way you can truly understand the process to avoid failure. Check it out. Hi friend, this is Erica right here. I'm a tiny citizen currently living in America. Cooking and traveling are my passion, so I'm here to share with you my favorite Asian recipes. I make kitchen trivia short and Asian home cooking recipe on this channel, so if that interests you, please subscribe and keep watching. If you watch some Japanese movie or animations, you might know that the Japanese call the chocolate chocoretto. And nama in Japanese means raw, or you can also understand as a half finished product. So, what is a half finished chocolate? And why is it nama choco but not nama chocoretto? Nama chocoretto in Japanese means chocolate ganache. Chocolate ganache was invented in the 1850s in France by accident and are first used to make chocolate truffle in 1869. Chocolate truffle is a type of chocolate made with ganache stuffing, so that's why the chocolate that we're making today is called Nama Choco, which is a half chocolate product made out of a ganache without the outer hard chocolate shell. Nama Choco is translated into English as Nama Chocolate or Raw Chocolate. It is a Japanese invention that's basically the frozen ganache with cocoa powder on its surface and serve it as is. Another reason why people like to call it the raw chocolate it's because it expires way faster than the normal chocolate. Even the one that you bought in the store, the shelf life is only one month, which is a much shorter time than the regular chocolate because it contains cream and butter. But if you ever get a chance to taste the Nama chocolate, you will 100% fall in love with this unique texture and understand exactly what it means by melting in your mouth. So without further ado, let's check out our ingredients today. Screenshot! Today we're making three different flavors of Nama chocolate. The regular dark chocolate flavor, sweet white chocolate, as well as the matcha flavor chocolate. Chocolate, no matter if it's white or black, it is all sensitive to heat and water. So whenever you're trying to heat up your chocolate, you want to heat it on top of water instead of direct heat. We'll chop our chocolate bricks as small as we can to speed up the process. For the butter, we want softened but not melted butter. Because when a butter is completely melted with a microwave or oven, you will see that the fat and water content was separated. And like I said earlier, chocolate is afraid of water. So if you melt your chocolate with microwave, you will fail 100%. The easiest way to get the soft butter is just to leave the butter in room temperature overnight. And if you forget, you can also use a hand mixer to beat it soft as well. So now heat up some water and put a mixing bowl in. You want to make sure that it's floating so it's not direct heat. And also be very careful to make sure that the water don't get into the inner bowl. Pour in your heavy cream right now and let it heat up to around 140 to 150 Fahrenheit, which is 60 to 65 Celsius. The dark chocolate should never be heat up to over 120 Fahrenheit and the white chocolate should be under 110 Fahrenheit. We're going a little bit above the heat right now because as soon as we add in the cold chocolate, the temperature will drop instantly. It is not easy to set the water to a set temperature on the stove, so you can work with taking it on and off the water to heat up and cool down our ganache. Now when the temperature gets to 140, take the bowl off the heat and we can add in our honey. Traditionally, the sweetener used here is the glucose syrup, but this ingredient is too hard to get, so for a homemade recipe, we can just replace it with honey. Keep stirring until the honey is completely melted. Check and make sure that the temperature is lower than 140 Fahrenheit, and you can add in your chocolate. And let it sit for 30 seconds. The reason why you shouldn't stir right away is because as soon as you start stirring, the air will go in and the temperature will drop faster. You can gently push down the chocolate so it can get some more heat. When 30 seconds has passes, you can start stirring. With this amount of heavy cream, it is too cold now to melt all of the chocolate. So whenever you feel like you need more heat, just put it back onto the water. Keep stirring gently with a spatula but not a mixer because we do not want to beat in any air. 
Keep stirring till you can't see any solid chocolate and the consistency turn into this smooth texture. We can add in our soft butter. The butter can give the chocolate some extra aroma and creaminess. And you can also see that after you add in the butter, the chocolate becomes smoother and shinier. Keep your eyes on the temperature so you don't overheat them. And when it's all melted and mixed in well together, we can put them into our mold. This ganache is super soft and pretty sticky, so make sure you get a parchment paper and a mold so it's easier to take out later. Since we're putting it into the freezer, it will become pretty hard when it's done. So make sure you use the baking sheet but not plastic wrap because the plastic wrap is easy to trap between chocolate and it will be harder to remove since it's so thin. The parchment paper is very smooth and hard so it won't get stuck in between. Cover the tray with a plastic wrap so our chocolate won't absorb other flavor and smell in the freezer and put it in for one hour. When the time's up, you can see it gets pretty hard already. Take it out of the mold and peel off the paper on the side. Now before we peel off the bottom and flip it, we want to sprinkle some cocoa powder on the surface to prevent sticking. When that's done, flip it around on another paper and peel off the bottom. Chocolate ganache is super sticky, so in order to make a smooth and straight cut, we have to heat up our knife on our stove very quickly. It doesn't have to be red hot, but just slightly warmer so the chocolate can be melt off the knife. Simply cut them into the shape you prefer, normally it's a cube. Sprinkle some cocoa powder on top and done! The dark chocolate flavor Nama Choco is ready. The step to make the white Nama Choco is basically the same as the dark ones, but because the button white chocolate we bought already contains cream and is way softer, the ingredient ratio is a bit different. And we don't need to add any syrup because it's already pretty sweet. By mixing the matcha powder in with the heavy cream, you will create the matcha nama choco. Matcha can melt pretty well when it's heated up to 140 Fahrenheit, but if you have an immersed blender, it can make the matcha ganache look even smoother. An immersion blender can make sure that there's no air going into our ingredients. Don't use the normal blender because when the air goes in, you will see that your heavy cream got whipped up. When the air get into our nama choco, there will be air bubble in the cube and it's not gonna taste as smooth as the normal ones. The rest of the step is exactly the same and you can sprinkle matcha powder on the matcha nama chocolate and sprinkle the sugar powder on the white nama choco. Here are the final result of all three Japanese flavor nama choco. The ideal temperature of storing for nama choco is between 4 to 7 Celsius, which is the normal refrigerated temperature. And the best way to serve it is to take it out of the fridge 10 minutes before serving. Enjoy! The word of the day today is chocolate. 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 Thank you for cooking with me to the end. Let me know if you like this recipe by giving this video a thumbs up. It's only gonna take you a second, but it's gonna help my channel a lot. I make video on YouTube every Monday and Thursday, so remember to hit that bell and you'll never miss out. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe on my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!